Hello and welcome to another one of my videos. Again, I've gone retro with the old school table. Um, I've been doing some work elsewhere just to kind of spice up my life, I guess. In today's video, I'm gonna be going through some coins I bought. There's not many. Um, again, it was another gentleman who messaged me via, via email through the link in the description. Let's go through what I bought. Well, actually, technically I haven't bought it. Um, we agreed a price, so I'm just waiting on him to email me back and then I will pay the gentleman. I always try and confirm. Stock's been very hit and miss at the moment. Um, it's been slow from a range of my suppliers. I think where the market's so jittery and no one really wants to buy much, you know, I think dealers are holding on to other stock. I do have big plans coming up. I will go for it but at a later date to counteract this, I will be going on the offensive. Um, I've just secured funding. Uh, and a lot of people are like, don't get yourself in debt, we're heading to a recession. I, I will go for it, but uh, yeah, let's go for the stock. So again, th there isn't much stock. So he sent me a 2020 Silver Eagle. There was a gentleman, Foster McAdam, I think. Uh, he was like, oh, you're showing the coins too quickly. Sorry, sorry. I'll give you a nice slow one and I'll, I'll talk through. So I may be updating my, my camera phone. I haven't decided. I, I have taken on a sizable loan uh, to purchase various things for the business. And I think in a time of recession, which we're in, let's, let's face it, I, I don't see how they can turn around and say we're not because everybody I know is kind of tightening their belt buckles except for one guy I know who just lost the plot. <laughs> but uh, I'm hoping that a lot of trade comes my way. I'm always a buyer. I've increased my liquidity. I've increased my reserves. Now it's time to walk the walk, so to speak. It's very easy saying things. A lot of people will say to me, I used to do X, Y, Z. And I always listen to people. But at the same time, it's not always feasible to implement. Or at least that's what I've learned via experience. So I've been seeing someone, She's she's been trying to help me out with a few things, which I appreciate. Um, it's not always feasible, you know, it's, but, at the same time, she's pretty switched on in terms of business matters anyway. Probably should pay her a fee. <laughs> There's that one, got a kook. So I paid three over an ounce on these. I think that's where I'm gonna benchmark it, uh, depending on where the market goes. So just buying from the public, it's probably gonna be three over. It's pretty much what I paid dealers. Um, uh, maybe two to three, depending on if the market slows a bit more. For uh, that price range, or that price point, I should be able to win some business. This one had some marks on it, uh, which is a shame. It's the first 2021 I've had. I haven't actually had any of the 2020 kooks. I, like my reserves, which I recently sold off. I sold them off about a month or two ago. I just let them go in one, in one go. You know, they were all older kooks, like 2012, 2016, I think it was. Horse of Hanover. I'm not really buying QBs at the moment, hence why I pay free over. Uh, usually I pay slightly more. I'm so heavy on QBs and the market has died a death. That is what it is. Do I think the market will come back on QBs? Yes, I do. But again, it's, it's all about cash flow like cash flow is king in my game it, it's it's not as as much as i'd say oh, i'll pay you 25 an ounce on these they're not even moving for 55 anymore 55 used to be an absolute steal on queen's beast some of the queen's beast used to go for 100 plus it isn't the case anymore do i think that will come back i'm not sure it'll go back to over 100 i know the, the griffin went for over 100 at one point um I do think it will, the prices will increase across the board. I do have Queen's Beast in my reserve. 
the only problem is they milk spot like nothing. 100 gram bar, again, I paid free over pro rata on this. I'm always happy to get 100 gram bars in. I'm not really a fan of the this. I, I get it, but at the same time, I just think it's a bit meh. Could have done better on that, I think. It did come with a COA, I don't have it on me. So this wasn't meant to be part of the deal. And the gentleman sends me a message. I know there's someone who's after one of these. Someone messaged me saying, oh, if you ever get a 10 ounce Greyhound in. And for the life of me, I can't remember who asked for it. Um, but the gentleman was like, do you mind if I, I chuck in the 10 ounce? And I said, yeah, sure, it's not a problem. I'm not even sure what these go for. I'm not sure how the market would take for these. I know the two ounce market, they absolutely loathe the Greyhound. It's the least well-liked coin out of the set. And let's be honest, what can you do with a Greyhound? It's not like a, a lion or a dragon, you know, these are cool animals. Like, I say animals. <laughs> Lion's an animal. Like, the the unicorn, The they do well. But the Greyhound, it's just a bit meh. I probably got about 40 Greyhounds, two ounce Greyhounds. I'm just gonna be sitting on them. I'm not gonna give them away. I'll just wait for the prices to pick up. You know, the reserve is there for a reason. I have been selling down the reserve. Um, I've been moving it into a cash position and also gold. Uh, and you may be saying, but Sean, you like your silver. Why are you moving from something that is more profitable to kind of less profitable? And for me, it's more about space and ease of use. Um, I've just got to the point where I own a lot of silver and it's a right pain going to the lockup, you know, constantly running around and picking it up and trying to sell it. It's okay when it all sells, but when it doesn't all sell, you know, I've got to make two trips to the lockup and back, back to the lockup. And it's, it's not very time effective. So if I can kind of cut down on the running around, because I know gold will sell. Gold, as soon as it moves closer to spot, it tends to move, especially you like 20 francs and uh, gold sovereigns and bits like that. So let's put that there. And last but not least, so he sent me a proof 10th Ten pounds Libertad. It does have copper spotting. It's two marks. One there, one there. There's also a slight mark elsewhere. I paid ten over for this. I I did say to him. I say I paid ten over. I, I've offered him ten over. Whether he chooses to accept that is on him. Uh, let's zoom that in. See, it's got a mark there as well. I'm thinking of just getting it sent in for grading, conservation, more than anything. Grading, I'm not really that fussed about. Proof Libertads always tend to do well. It's very rare I see gold Libertads. But it's not a problem free coin. I think it will work out a treat, but by the time I get it back, you know, I'm 200 pound into the coin. Yeah, it needs conservation here. I don't think there's scratches. I don't think it's anything that can't be remedied. And for the life of me, I don't understand why Mexican gold copper spots more than other gold. It's something I have noticed, especially when it's 999. It, I'm not entirely sure the reasons why. I've seen pandas copper spot. Also, you know, that's... The reason I say it's copper spotting, because usually when a jeweler tests it, it they tend to be bigger dots. 
Anyway, that's it for today. I wasn't meant to do a 10 minute video. I was kind of hoping to cap it at eight. But yeah, 10 minutes. Um, I hope you've enjoyed the coins and the talk and I'll see you on the next one.